Dear President Macri, it is my great pleasure to welcome you back to Davos. When you last joined us here in 2016, it was shortly after your inauguration as President of Argentina. Over the past two years, you have worked really hard. You have successfully initiated key political and economic transformations in your country, generating new jobs and boosting entrepreneurship. These future-orientated reforms combined with your resilient leadership have supported Argentina to strengthen its global positioning. This year, Mr. President, you also join us in an additional capacity as the chair of G20 Presidency. In this role, you have stated that you will lead the G20 based on the principle of putting people first. Given your commitment to multilateralism, your leadership will be critical in helping to achieve more inclusive growth and intergenerational progress. It is imperative that leaders prioritize policies for ensuring a more sustainable planet and productive workforce. President Macri, we look forward to hearing your perspectives on the current state of the world and on your vision for Argentina and the G20. You can count on our full support as you continue your important work in the coming years. Mr. President. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Borge, for the introduction. With such a good presentation, I should hire you as my next chief of campaign. Eh? <laughs> but as, as you mentioned, only two years ago here in Davos, only one month after taking office, I shared with many of you my vision for Argentina as a reliable partner for business and as an honest broker of global politics. Today, I'm here to reinforce that vision. This year, this year theme at Davos is creating a shared future in a fractured world, fracture. Argentina has long suffered the consequences of that fracture because for decades we have been isolated from the world. But Argentina entered a new phase. We are now in the position to play a significant role on the international stage. In the last two years, we put in order our economy and the country back on track, as you recognize, Jorge. Argentina is in a sustainable and steady path of inclusive growth. Every day, we make decisions that drive us towards our primary goal of reducing poverty. The economy grew 42 point percent in the third quarter last year, and is gaining momentum. Inflation fell to its lowest figure in a decade. Wages and income recovered, and social security nets expanded. Poverty and employment rates were reduced throughout the year. We look towards the future with optimism. This already is our longest period of growth since 2011. Investment is booming with double-digit growth. Today, no other country has more potential than Argentina. We are rich in natural resources, and we have something even more important than that, our people's talent and entrepreneurship. We have awarded 147 renewable energy projects, such as Parque Solano Nogasta in La Rioja, in the north of Argentina. Once the project is up and running, it will generate enough energy to substitute imports to equal to 185,000 barrels of oil a year. We have also projects like Cauchari in the province of Jujuy that you should visit. It's a very beautiful place. And that will be the largest in Latin America. I mention these two projects only to show the huge potential that Argentina has in renewable energy. 
Our country also has the enormous potential to obtain large hydrocarbon reserves from unconventional resources. I'm talking about Vaca Muerta, an extension of 35,000 square kilometers. It's the, largest, uh, the second largest reserve of unconventional gas in the world. We also have one of the largest reserves of lithium. Our pipeline of projects is getting bigger and bigger throughout the country. The opportunities in the mining sector are unique. In an area with the mining potential of more than three quarters of a million square kilometers, our country had only granted permits on little more than one third. Tourism is a massive opportunity, especially in the northern provinces I have mentioned to you before, where we are committed to promoting and increasing investments. During the last winter season, we had encouraging results with a historical number of visitors. And last year, we had one million more airplane passengers than in 2016. And thousands of Argentines have flown for the first time. Moreover, between January and September, we reached a record in terms of hotel occupancy, 15.5 million tourists. Another area of potential, as you all know, is food production. Argentina can become a fundamental provider. With exports over $25 billion, we are capable of producing food for more than 400 million people. Argentine food is present around the world and is an example of our country's reputation in terms of innovation and quality. We have outstanding outstanding sanitary and environmental standards and are ready to meet the needs of the most sophisticated consumers. That's thanks to our persistent effort in developing new technology. Argentina's human resources and innovating ecosystem have the potential of transforming the country into a global hub for knowledge-based services. I want to mention to you that four of, our, of Latin American six unicorns come from Argentina. We are building political consensus around an agenda based on permanent reform. Argentina is leaving its populist experiment behind, as we were talking before, Borgen. And without an economic, avoiding an economic crisis, and within democratic institutions, something that had, had never happened before in the country. Last month, we began our presidency of the G20, uh, in which we are very excited. Ten years have passed since the first leaders' summit in Washington, D.C. Today, unlike in 2008, global growth is stable, but it has not reached everyone. And this has undermined the confidence of many in globalization. This should be an everyday reminder that we have to do much more. The theme of our presidency is building consensus for fair and sustainable development. Argentina will bring a view from the South. We want to convey the voice not only of our country, but that of the whole South American region. We establish an agenda based in three key areas. First, the future of work. The G20 should help ensure that technological change will not increase exclusion or social disintegration. Education is at the center of this debate. The future will require substantial investment in training and updating skills. Second, infrastructure for development. It is crucial to mobilize private investment in order to close the global infrastructure gap. Third, a sustainable future in terms of food. As I mentioned before, Argentina is ready to make its contribution to global food security. Hosting the G20 is one of the biggest challenges in Argentina's history. 
We are committed to conveying the G20 with the same spirit of consensus that endorsed the ambitious agenda we are moving forward in Argentina. With the support of our partners, working together, we will strive to build a shared future of fair and sustainable development. Thank you. And now we can continue with some comments. Nada. Muchas gracias, uh, Mr. President. Um, it that's is all your Spanish. Muchas gracias. I, uh, you know, that's that's after the peace process in Colombia. <laughs> I picked up a couple of words. Um, it's great to have you back here, and we had a chance to uh, chat a bit in the speaker's room, and we also were inspired by Churchill that once said, "The farther backward you can look, the farther forward we're likely to see." And the history of Argentina. Uh, is very interesting. As the President mentioned to me, if you go back to 1910, the GDP of Argentina was almost equal with the one of the U.S. Absolutely. If you, and if you go back to 1945, I think Argentina was one of the richest countries in the world. So what happened in between and uh, when will we see Argentina back in the top and uh, what are the reforms you have to deliver on top of what you already have done to achieve that? Well, thank you, Borges. Before, I want to thank everybody for attending the conference, for being so supportive with our Argentina. And uh, with the help of, of the world, with good partners, uh, we really believe that we are, we are going in the path to be, again, an important global player. And I'm convinced of that because I think that we have learned of our bad past experiences. No? As you mentioned before, Argentina was a very rich country and still has the potential to be and, and to give vast opportunities to all, all our the older citizens. And what, the difference between this moment and other moments in the recent history of Argentina is that the changes are coming bottom up. And the citizens have understood that if we continue to be isolated from the world, what we are going to do is deepen our poverty problems. So we need to be part of the world. We are, going, we are trying to come back to the world with an intelligent approach and build reliable and trustworthy relationships in, in long-term basis. And at the same time, as uh, you may know, my first commitment with uh, my citizens is to reduce poverty. I ask to be evaluated as, as president of, during these years if I achieve or not to reduce poverty. And to reduce poverty, you, you need to create jobs and improve education, are the two keys, important keys that you have. And uh, for that, you need to increase investments. <coughs> And to increase investments, you have to ha be reliable, predictable, uh, uh, build rule of law. And that's the, the central part of our job in, in, in the last two years. No? And I think that we have improved a lot. We have uh, gained back uh, clear and, uh, and truth-worthy statistics. Now you can know what is going on in Argentina. We are cutting inflation. That is the worst tax that you, a government can collect from the people. We are, we are working to improve transparency. We are battling against corruption that produces an incredible inefficiency that destroys jobs. And I think that in, in this way, we are, we are building a new environment, new regulatory frameworks to create new opportunities. And as I mentioned, my second theme, the second theme for the G20 in Buenos, Buenos Aires is moving private sector to build infrastructure, no? to, to build and operate infrastructure. And for that, we have a, uh, approved a very modern PPP law, and we are launching billions of dollars in, in new tenders, highways, energy, ports, airports, uh, Waterworks, and 
Fortunately, the, the first tenders have been very successful. Many companies from all around the world are attending the, the tenders, and we expect that many others will come, because I think that uh, PPP tool is, is wonderful in terms of sp speeding up the investments and creating more room for transparency, because you don't have to lead between the contractors and the government in monthly basis. You lead only once. You, they get the contract, they have to build whatever they are committed, and once they finish, they start collecting the, their money, you know, so that it speeds up, gains transparency, and I think that it will, this is fundamental to develop. Uh, every underdeveloped country needs connectivity, physical and virtual connectivity, so we're, we're very focused on that, unfortunately with very good results, and I expect that this year will be uh, another step forward because we are talking about nearly 30 billion dollars of, of future investments that we are we are demanding from Argentines and foreigners no? mr. president I, I think uh, there is uh, consensus uh, in this room that the rule of law is a prerequisite also for foreign direct investments and doing business uh, in countries uh, predictability um, this was a challenge um, in the previous years, uh, international companies that had invested um, also saw that their assets um, were uh, being uh, challenged, to put it diplomatically. You also mentioned the fight against uh, corruption. You have seen uh, in your neighboring country, Brazil, that this has been a, a really very important agenda uh, item during the last years, and the people end up in prison uh, because of corruption, and we're seeing also that corruption numbers are falling dramatically. Uh, are we seeing uh, the same in Argentina? Uh, and uh, is, there, is there a mind change when it comes to this? Yes, fortunately the same is going on in Argentina. Since we are in government, the, the transparency, we have gained uh, incredible improvement in transparency. We, we, went from the place 50 something to we scale like 20 in, in, in transparency uh, let's say statistics and uh, i think that we we have to keep working in that sense no for that obviously you have to work to improve the independency and the quality of your justice we are working on that and i think that Fortunately, this is, this is something that we are uh, really viewing as a Mercosur challenge. No? And I think that what Brazil did is wonderful in terms of future, even though during, during the process has, has end up being a, a, a big crisis. But for the future of Brazil, what happened, recently happened, will be very good as is very good for Argentina, no? that we are getting rid of, of bad habits that, that don't help to create jobs, don't help to reduce poverty. So uh, I'm really very optimistic about what's, what's going on. And let me tell you that it's something, all the reforms that we have moved forward, that we had approved, had been with the support of the opposition, because we, have, we are in minority in both chambers. That shows the strength of this new process in Argentina, and in approval of that, in all my trips, I, I'm uh, in my delegation is somebody from the opposition. Today is the governor of Entre Rios, a very important governor, very important state, and in, in all the trips they are coming with me because they are also part of, of this moment of Argentina, no? trying to, to bring new investments, to create new jobs, and in that way to create opportunities from, from, from our people. That's not the case in all capitals these days. Huh? But um, congratulations on, on that inclusiveness um, also. You mentioned Mercosur, uh, Mr. President. Um, you know, uh, traditionally we have seen a Mercosur as something, um, a kind of trade alliance that has also been about protection. Uh, we saw the Pacific Alliance being uh, developed uh, that had a different uh, view on these issues. But it seems like Mercosur is now changing very fast too. 
There are discussions between Mercosur and the European uh, Union. Argentina hosted the WTO ministerial meeting uh, in December. So um, is it a real reform, Mercosur, we're seeing? And you will see Mercosur now also establishing free trade agreements in a very uh, offensive way um, all over the world. Uh, just share shortly your view on that. Well, till, till today, Mercosur had been the closest region in the world, no? with the higher protections. And we had understood all together that this didn't help to reduce poverty. So we are moving forward to strengthen Mercosur. And I think that the agreement between Mercosur and the European Union is a huge opportunity for both, for both. We are near. Next week, we are having a meeting at Brussels. And any help will always be welcome. Forum is neutral because, and impartial. Yes. It, it sounds like a good idea. No, by the way, you have good friends, so you can talk with them. <laughs> if you really believe that Mercosur is also a good opportunity for the European Union, especially after Brexit. And, uh, and uh, I think that it's a natural association because in South America, we are all descendants from Europe. So it should be the, the first important agreement before others that we are negotiating. And we are, we are close. We are very close. I'm visiting uh, President Macron tomorrow, and I expect that he will give me good news because some, some members tell me that the problem is always the agriculture point, and that relates everybody to France. No? So I expect that we will find a solution to that because this can be a great opportunity for both. Eh? Mercosur, this will be a good guide to continue the path of reforms, a good association. And for the European Union, it's, it's very difficult to find a better region in terms of food security, in terms of energy, especially renewables now that we are all pushing in that direction. I think there are going to be a lot of uh, youngish uh, energy in that room when you meet with uh, President uh, uh, Macro. You have strong farmers in Argentina and strong farmers yes. also in France. So, so I would, it would be interesting to be a fly on the wall there. That guarantees I, I will have a very good, a very good dinner, no? That's never a challenge in uh, Elisa, huh? Um, just two short questions before we wrap up before lunch, talking about um, food. Um, you're seeing, talking also about Mercosur, uh, Venezuela uh, is, and at least was a, a part of, uh, of this. We are concerned about uh, the development there. Uh, we also saw uh, signs uh, in your country uh, at a certain time that reminded us a little bit about the very toxic climate you're seeing now uh, in Venezuela. Uh, do you see any possibility to break the current impulse in Caracas? No. I, I'm not uh, optimistic. I have been claiming for, for open and clear elections in the last years. Uh, I'm claiming from, from uh, all the, the abuse that had been done by Maduro. In Venezuela, they don't respect human rights. That's not a democracy. Unfortunately, the, the citizens of Venezuela are suffering a lot. We are in a sanitary crisis. But unfortunately, what we see is that things are going worse and worse. Last question, uh, as I mentioned also in the introduction, you have the presidency of G20 um, this year, and um, you have uh, high aspirations. What do you think, uh, if we are privileged enough to have you in Davos also next year, what, what would you hope that you have achieved in your G20 presidency when you're gonna sum it up? I think that this is a very special moment in the human's history, no? The technological revolution that we are going through brings up the fear. I expect that the first thing is to reduce fear. Fear drives us in the bad direction. 
makes us to pay attention to messianic speeches that will not solve the problems. And I think that G20 have proved to be a place in which a group of countries try to cooperate each other to increase inclusive growth. No? So I think that we have to work hard with, in education. We, ne we need to convince the unions to be part of the changes and not to be always against the changes because we need to train our kids for jobs that today don't even exist. So that's a huge challenge and, and we need to, to work together, to work together. And we, we need to understand that, that that happened to the doctors for many years before, that they have to keep studying every night. No? That happens in, in, in every sector. Now we, we have to be ready to keep developing skills during our whole life. No? This is the, the new world. No? But this new world will open us, surprise us with new opportunities. So for that, obviously, again, we need infrastructure, physical and virtual infrastructure, so everybody will have the, the same tools and, 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 and work together. And the other issue that I want to raise is that for food security, we need to produce more food. And that, and that means that we have a big challenge. The G20 countries uh, um, accomplish more or more 60% of land, uh, agriculture land, and 80% of the trade in food and agriculture, 60 and 80. So we have the challenge to bring uh, to the place a, a, a responsible, land uh, management techniques that will put in, in, in value and with responsibility the soil as a strategic resource to uh, sustainable development and, and produce and, and, and food production. No? And we have to bring up that because there is now starting a big debate in which we, we have to fulfill both things battle against climate change, but produce more food. Thank you. I'm uh, positive that uh, you will deliver a great G20 presidency and uh, also all the best uh, for the future reforms of your great country. I'm sure that it will be. I expect that we all, you will all visit Argentina. In, in the way to Argentina, you can pass by the house of Argentina and taste some incredible, delicious sweet bread and empanadas and, and wines that will show you some of so many incredible things that we can do in Argentina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There is no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs>